all right so here's what we've done i know it looks like a mess but we've got the outer sheathing off so we don't have our switch and whatnot hooked up uh, to prevent the thing from walking off of the desk I've disconnected the wiring harness from the drivetrain motor controller. So that's the one that's basically running the, the two tank treads. So we've got this one going to one side, this one going over here. The second thing that we've got here is all of this down in here was originally part of the original drivetrain for the cutter disc. But I've already run into an issue and I think it's already burned out. So what I've done is I've basically removed that part of the circuit and over here where the motor used to come out, which is right, right here, I've basically disconnected that and we've now got it into here. So I just threw together a little temporary wiring harness and you can see my little enable pin is here, I'm just getting five volts to the enable line. So the code hasn't actually required any changes to be able to make this work because originally, and we can find it, this green wire here comes all the way around and it connects up here to pin 11 and it was sending a PWM signal to our MOSFET, which was basically pulsing the motor anyways. The motor controller that we've got over here takes that same PWM signal. So I have some little jumper wires running around to basically get the, the signal, the power of the ground, all that kind of stuff. But without having to modify the code, I've been able to swap this out almost as a drop-in replacement for that circuit to control this motor. Now with some code modifications, I can actually take these current sense pins and I can actually read into the code how much current the motor is using. But at the moment, it is actually working. So if I actually turn this on, you can hear the motor is actually working. Yep, did you see that? And that hurt a little bit. Let the smoke right out of it. All that beautiful magic smoke, just right out. Uh, it took me, it, it, it took me a day or two to, uh, to, to look at it again. Um, that one hurt. Uh, got a little late, uh, must have messed something up, wired something wrong, loose connection. Um, didn't go well, um, so that, that, that hurt. But I, uh, I did take a look at it, and I think the problem was um, the connection to the ground wire on the motor driver. I apparently did not wire that to ground on the board. I wired that to positive, I think. And it just it kind of popped the, the one side of the wire, and when it did the other side of that wire that came loose dropped into the bank of resistors and grounded out a whole bunch of stuff um, let me uh, let me show you okay so I think what happened was when I did the the wiring for the connection that went over to the actual motor controller I think when I wired it up I wired it um, into here for my testing. So I think in the testing it was actually wired up here. But then when I went to wire it up to the actual solder joint, 
I wired it here. And that is not the ground connection. You can see that my ground connection is actually over here on this rail. So I think what happened was when I, when I wired it up, I wired the 12 volt here into the ground connection on the motor controller. And when I did that, when it fired up, it ended up basically grounding out that wire and it popped surprisingly not from here first um, but it looked like it actually popped from the motor controller first so when it did it dropped over and down in here I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's see if we can get some light in there, maybe. So, right in here. You get it? Yeah, so right beside those wires there. This whole one side of these resistors are actually just black and cooked. So that whole side, it hit this and just fried all four of these resistors. Each one of these little banks of resistors is actually for measuring the current off of the motor controller for the drive gear. So these connections here are actually coming down to that resistor bank and that's how it's able to determine what the actual uh, current that's going to the left and right wheel are. So obviously I need that back. Uh, I have to redo these. Um, so unfortunately getting in here to do this is kind of a pain um, and there's some other changes that I want to do uh, to this board anyways like since we're actually using the other motor controller a lot of this down here is no longer needed. This was part of the original uh, drive uh, circuit for the cutting disc. So this doesn't need to be here anymore. So this is all stuff that's that's not in use. The other thing that I uh, that I don't like um, is having this Arduino Uno. I actually have it mounted on here, and then we basically have these these jumpers here. Every time I need to reprogram this thing, I actually end up setting the entire mower on my desk to be able to reprogram it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and redo this board as as much as that pains me to say I'm gonna redo this board and the instead of the Arduino Uno we're actually going to put an Arduino Nano with uh, breakouts so that way anytime I want to reprogram it I can just pull the Nano off of the board it has all the same IO so it'll be fine same code will work um, but it's gonna allow me to be able to not have to put you know the dirty grass covered mower on my desk every time I want to pro reprogram it it also gives me the ability to swap out much easier the nanos and I can actually test new firmware without blowing away a working nano this part of the circuit's going to be there obviously I have to redo this since you know somebody let out all the smoke um, the LED stuff I might move these around a little bit uh, these Two connections over here these are for um, the inductive sensors uh, that are going to be used for the boundary fence so I'm not actually using these yet I do have the the parts for it but I haven't set it up yet so in this effort I may actually go ahead and do it since I've got all the parts in for it so I may go ahead and put those on and leave that but this is going to go away and my power and ground um, rails I've got. I, I want to do something a little better about this. I don't like. I don't like soldering to these individual headers like this. I actually want to. I, I want to do something a little better. A little better uh, connection, whether it's um, you know, some sort of a JST connection or even just a bank of screw down terminals for the power and ground rails. Something that's a little a little more solid because some of these things I'm not. I'm not thrilled with the connections and it's hard to work on this. So. Um, there are there are some changes that I'm going to go ahead and make. So here we are. Uh, we are now going into part seven of this. Uh, I did not think it was going to be this many parts to this project, but uh, different changes, different modifications have made this a kind of an ongoing thing. 
Uh, so this is going to be, this is going to be, I think this is going to take a while. Uh, so part, part six is, you know, obviously ending with me letting out the smoke. And part seven is going to be repairing that, uh, that nice little mistake. We learned on this one, maybe not do the work so late at night. Uh, stick around. Hopefully we can get another one out. I've got the board uh, already started for the repairs. Uh, it still pains me to have to redo it again, but that's that's where we're at. Uh, so uh, stick around, um, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see how this turns out.